everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and now that my three informative videos are done for the day, a bunch of you guys probably thought, oh no, Blaha done did three informative videos. We are not getting a current events today. Well, you were wrong. You were wrong. A bunch of people linked me Kenobi's 130-pound incline dumbbell presses. And, uh... You know, let's just get this out of the way before I even get to the Hattie Weapons so that We all know what everybody loves when I do a Kenobi video. You guys all know it's the Bane voice, right? Yeah? And if I do one now without doing a Bane voice, people actually get mad. They demand it. And as a showman, I have to give my audience what they demand. You know? And a bunch of people in the comments, because he posted a video of him lifting with bad form again, my name came up over and over and over. Blah is going to have a field day with this one. Here it comes. You guys ready? Speak of the devil. And we shall appear. So, on that note, let me put on my plus five out of weapons with it. Work on skilled up my crafting a little bit. And let's talk about this. Now, that was a nerd double on Tondra right there. You guys got the. Menage Trois. We got gaming reference and a Batman reference. All right, guys. So here we go. Kenobi, in his unwise Padawan ways, still learning the ways of the Force. There you go. We went for three. Did some incline dumbbell presses with some serious snap city form. Back, I'll refer to another YouTuber in a minute who tore a pack using this same sort of snap city form, but that's okay. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, I'm trying to be a nicer person these days, and I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Just like I've said before, you know what? Uh, Kenobi's actually pretty strong on the way to chin-ups. That's one reason he's actually got an aesthetic structure, right? lean and you good on weighted chin-ups good on standing press too those lifts are going to be for most of you guys out there those lifts if you get really strong on them you're going to be more aesthetic i don't care what your genetics are there's another 10 pounds of fat and get really strong on them you're going to be more aesthetic also he's good at those lifts uh, and i'm gonna give credit for this the one good thing i saw he sat down with the dumbbells and kicked them into position because there's one thing i cannot stand well, besides dumbbells in general, I think barbells. Barbells and weighted body weight exercises are all anyone really needs. But should you choose to do dumbbells for an assistance exercise, um, you know, they have their place. They have their place. They're not primary exercises. They're good assistance movements, showing up weak points. I cannot stand people who use dumbbells that they are not strong enough to kick into position. Uh, it's a sign of weakness. It's a sign you're handling a weight you can't handle, right? We, we all know that. We've talked about this in the past. That's a guy who I know right up front is going to eventually tear a peck with dumbbells. Is the guy who cannot sit down with them on his lap and get them into position without a spotter. This is an exercise you really shouldn't use a spotter on to begin with. It's unnecessary. You should be able to kick them into position, have them start at the bottom, and crank out your reps. You can't do that, it's a problem. At least he was able to sit down and get them into position without a spotter. I will give props for that. Because 90% of the morons in the gym can't do that. All right, that already puts him in the top 10% right there. So I'll give him that, I'll give him that. Problem, as usual, like with every other press he does, they were a partial. He didn't come all the way down. Uh, he had excessive amounts of internal rotation of the shoulders because he doesn't know the bar path on the press. Just like his barbell stuff where he's going to eventually tear a rotator cuff. He's going to eventually tear a pec. We saw the exact same thing here. But it was actually, I think, even more exaggerated than his barbell work. Now, when people do dumbbells, what's the reason you do a dumbbell press? What is the actual advantage? Because let's be honest here, barbells are generally better. Barbells are generally better than dumbbells. 
And yes, that includes even for unilateral training. Because people don't develop imbalances left to right because of barbells. They develop it because they side load and lift uneven. You can do that with a dumbbell also. And if you use terrible technique, dumbbells aren't going to fix it. They don't give you balance left to right. It doesn't give you better even development. That's, that's nonsense. That's not understanding biomechanics. But what is the advantage? Get a deeper stretch, right? Incline dumbbells particularly. The incline dumbbell press, particularly at a fairly shallow angle for people who struggle to build their chest using traditional barbell exercises, and I understand some of you do exist, even I with a strength training background who believes in the barbell lifts will admit there are people, a small number, who do perform the lifts correctly, who struggle with this. For most people, they don't know how to do a press, that's why. They don't know how to pitch, that's why they can't grow their chest. They don't know how to do it. It's not the exercise, it's them. But there are some who exist who struggle with it. They are real, they exist, they're out there. And the incline dumbbell press allows for probably the best myotatic reflex in your pectoral of any exercise I can think of. If you really and truly struggle with chest development, uh, for whatever reasons, it's a genetic situation, incline dumbbell press is a pretty good exercise because it allows for a deep stretch. It allows for a relatively safe deep stretch to get a stretch reflex in your pectorals. Through the whole chest, it hits both heads, both heads actually fairly well with it. It's a good exercise for that as long as you don't go too steep on the incline. Uh, and I'm not talking about just bodybuilders. There are strength athletes who need more pec, right? They're out there. I mean, if you bring your pecs up, your uh, bench press is probably going to go up. Your overhead press is probably going to go up. Uh, so again, you get a deeper stretch reflex. That's the benefit. That's it. That's 100% of the benefit. There is no other benefit biomechanically to the dumbbell chest press. None. Deeper stretch reflex. That's it. You didn't go all the way down. What's the point? You didn't go all the way down because it let him use a heavier weight. But you know, that stretch reflex is harder. You can't use as much weight. Uh, because again, you've got to move the weight further. You're at a bio, uh, biomechanical disadvantage leverage position. It's harder. If he had gone all the way down, he'd have had to take 10, 20 pounds off. Maybe more. We don't know until he actually does it. So he didn't go all the way down. So what's the point of doing an incline dumbbell if you don't go all the way down? Just stick to the barbell. Keep touching your chest at least. So he didn't do that. Defeats the purpose of the exercise. What's the point? Just do a barbell. If you don't care about getting the deep stretch at the bottom, you handle more weight with the barbell through the same range of motion. Lift more weight, get more muscle. This isn't a difficult concept. Other problem, internal rotation. He had those elbows jacked way up. Normally I tell guys even 90 degrees like this will eventually hurt you. I think his on some of the reps drifted all the way up. You guys remember Devin Physique? He tore a peck doing that, didn't he? Yeah, trying to hit one rep maxes with a weight too heavy for him, but a spotter had to help him get into position. Elbows flared at the bottom, tore his peck on camera. I covered it, tore it right there on camera. We got video footage of it. The weight he tore his chest with wasn't much heavier, and he's bigger and stronger. Wasn't much heavier than what uh, Kano Booty was using. So keep it up, because here's the thing. You're using a weight that you're not strong enough to get the stretch at the bottom. And you're putting yourself in a position of internal rotation, which is gonna have the highest risk of tearing a pectoral and the highest risk of tearing a rotator cuff. What's gonna happen when the dumbbell does accidentally come too far down? It's gonna happen. Snap City. Um, how much money you gonna think while you're rehabbing all that after surgery? How much money you think you're gonna make off your physique at that point? Also, do you think, uh, any of you guys think he knows enough about training to rehabilitate himself successfully and rebuild what he has after that happens? No, that's it, this career is gonna be over. Um, it's a matter of time. The guy keeps training incorrectly with this stuff, it's a matter of time. The other thing, uh, no stable platform, his butt kept lifting. 
He didn't dig in tight. He didn't have a stable platform to press from. At least he didn't have dancing feet. Now, there's one thing I can't stand is guys who dance their feet when they're doing any sort of leg press. That's got to go. That's the sign of no stability at all. But butt kept lifting. You need to set your butt in tight and set your traps tight against the bench. doesn't matter whether you're doing a flat or an incline. Uh, things are the same. Again, a case of trying to use a weight that he's not strong enough to lift. The butt's having to lift this to get a little bit of extra drive. It's not strong enough. His chest and triceps and delts aren't strong enough to press the weight. So he couldn't come all the way down, having to use butt coming off the bench to get it moving. I'm not building muscle and strength through that. Come on. It's not how you get stronger. Tight form. Unless you do it in exercise, which you are specifically using leg drive. I mean, if you're doing a push press, I understand. It's not a push press. So again, teaching bad habits. Guy still doesn't know how to perform any sort of chest press correctly. Gonna get hurt teaching his audience bad habits. Um, you know, the weight was decent enough. I mean, I'm not gonna disrespect the amount of weight he had on there, but the technique he used, he's gonna get hurt. He will get hurt eventually. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. It's going to be this year, maybe. It's going to be next year, maybe. We'll wait and see. But it will happen unless he fixes it. And let's make this educational, guys. Turn them in. If you want to keep elbow tuck at the bottom, see, you want elbow tuck, you've got to turn the hands in. You can't have them out here, and you can't let those pinkies come up on the dumbbell press. You're going to get internal rotation of the shoulder. You're going to tear a rotator cuff. Um, and again, this is coming from someone who's into strength sports, where we care about absolute strength. But absolute strength cannot come at the expense of technique. It cannot come at the expense of safety. It can't. And the whole thing is, again, he wasn't coming all the way down. He couldn't come all the way down. Not strong enough to come all the way down, but coming off the bench, didn't get set in tight. Needs to work on it, guys. It's not. That's not gonna fly. It's not gonna fly. And everyone knew it already. As usual, there were comments were full of guys going, "Man, Blaha's gonna have fun with this. He's gonna have fun with this." And I did. Got to use our band voice. Get to talk about it. And as I said before, um, at the end of the day. He's got to clean that technique up. He's got to learn to perform these exercises correctly or he's going to get hurt. And as I always say with a lot of this stuff, I don't really care. If a person's going to be that willful ignorant. They're not going to listen to people who know better than them. That's fine. It's just like uh, Lane got hurt. Tons of coaches told him he was going to get hurt. He doesn't listen. He's smarter than that. That's fine. He keeps getting hurt. Kenobi wants to get hurt. That's his business. My problem is that he's a voice of authority. People are listening to him. They're buying programs from him. They are respecting his opinion because he has a certain look. He's marketed himself. Those people are going to get hurt. Naive young kids are going to learn these exercises incorrectly. They're going to get hurt. And it's not because they're dumb. It's because they just don't know any better. They're young. They're naive. He's flashy. You know, he's got them with the marketing. He got them with the Lamborghinis, with the girls he pays. You know, having wide shoulders, small waists, got their attention. Problem is, they're going to get hurt because they're going to imitate what they see him doing. Uh, and that's not good. And believe me, guys, I'm not about not training hard or not lifting heavy. I'm the first person out there who says every one of you guys need to be able to eventually get to a 300 bench natty. You know, I think you should be able to pot a bench 300 natty. I think a 400 squat is a reasonable, raw, no wrap squat for a healthy young man. I think a 500 pound deadlift is a totally reasonable goal for the average healthy young man putting in some time under the iron. All right? I'd like to see all you guys do that. All right? Lift heavy, train hard, but be smart about it. Learn to perform the lifts correctly so that you don't get hurt. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.